And as Josef Strauss's Feuerfest fades away, it's time once more for Dialysis, introduced by Jane Silvering. On Dialysis this week, we turn, if you like, inwards to the subject of the BBC. The endless reshuffles in the management hierarchy of the corporation have thrust the top echelons of the world's largest broadcasting organisation into the public eye as never before, as this sketch from the radio comedy show Dilemma for Marketing shows. Well, young Tommy should be back fairly soon. Yes, wasn't he lucky to win a day behind the scenes of the making of Blue Peter? Very exciting for him. (laughs) Hello, Mum. Hello, Dad. Hi, Tommy. Hello, darling. Did you have an exciting day? Oh, Mum, you wouldn't believe it. I went to the canteen and you'll never guess who I saw standing in the queue next to Clint Eastwood. Who? John Burt, the Deputy Director General of the BBC himself. (laughs) You did? I say, did you get his autograph? (laughs) I didn't dare. (laughs) And then I saw Michael Checkland, the DG. Just a glimpse because John Cleese was standing in the way. Worse luck. (laughs) But it was Checkland all right and he winked at me. Weren't you lucky? Did you manage to get any autographs at all? Well, I got Alan Yentobs, you know, controller of BBC Two. And that man from EastEnders, what's his name? Who plays Dirty Den? He got me Bill Cotton's autograph. (laughs) An extract there from Dial Emma for Thompson, exaggerated perhaps, but there's no doubt that the higher profile enjoyed or possibly suffered by the BBC's top management proceeds from the full entry of the corporation into the arena of public debate. For some, the problem stems from a perceived view of the BBC as being riddled with unrepresentatively liberal and anti-government staff. Jonathan Dick is the author of a report on the BBC compiled for the Adam Hitler Institute. He's also a lecturer in management at Lowbrow University. There is absolutely no doubt that the BBC is engaged on a campaign of underplaying the government's real achievements, sneering at the middle class, highlighting inner city problems, attacking the secret service and generally being clever. You are accusing then the BBC of bias? Yes. The very fact that you will no doubt refuse to transmit this interview proves that. But we are going to transmit this interview. Yes, no doubt, just to make me look stupid. (coughs) You have written that the BBC has an obsession with the health service. Quite so. You simply advocate pouring money into it. It makes you appear caring without having the responsibility of mature consideration of the problem. Forgive me, but many people think that injecting more money into the health service is a good idea. Yeah, but only because they've heard it on the BBC. So, how do you see the future of the corporation? The BBC should be privatised, like a newspaper. Wouldn't be biased then, would it? I see. The vast, 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 huge, vast majority that voted for Mrs Thatcher... The 40%? Yes, them. They are 25% better off now than they were. But to watch the BBC, you'd think that Britain was in decline with inner cities in ruin, infrastructure neglected, public services underfunded and morale low. My independent academic report proves this. An independent academic report compiled by a lecturer in management on behalf of a right-wing economic group. Yes. I want to bring in uh, Dr Tom Threadpiece from the Lev Gradzi Institute. Tom, your views. I'm going to take issue with everything that Jonathan Dick has said and I'm going to start taking issue now. One, uh, look down the Radio Times listing page. Uh, uh, What do we find? After Henry. Sneering at the middle class? I don't think so. Uh, Gardner's Question Time, Don't Wait Up. Wogan, elitist liberal nonsense? I beg your pardon, but hardly. Uh, Howard's Way, Bob's Full House, Bread, Jim will fix it, Blue Peter, seditiously undermining God, Thatcher and the Queen? Please excuse me, but I beg leave to doubt it. Excuse me, this man is being openly clever on the air. If he wants to be clever, why doesn't he go and live in Russia? The temperature of the sketch seems now to be rising a little. You see, all this programming and hours more irredeemably middle class, reinforcing bourgeois values inculcating a sense of family, property and middle-class morality. Oh, this is heady stuff. They've stopped being funny and started to shoot from the head. Indoctrinating an audience to believe in stability, wealth, capitalism, Western values, Caucasian supremacy, the royal family, the sanctity of marriage, masculinity, children and social heterodoxy. Is this satire? Is it polemic? Or what's going on? Openly flaunting words which can only be understood by the kind of people who take anti-racism to the ludicrous extreme of actually being anti-racist. What about programmes like Edge of Darkness, 
40 Minutes, oh, Panorama, on. Saturday on. Night Fry, Dialysis, Newsnight. Oh, I wish you could be here. They're now glaring at each other across the table. Two men in opposite corners of Britain in the late 80s. They can't both be right. It's as if Britannia herself is at stake. Uh, you see, those programmes are ghetto broadcasting to the minority, challenging nothing, reaching no one, save the paranoid establishment who cannot bear their authoritarian paternalism to be undermined. Oh, that's just piggy with oh, Lord, this is exciting. I just can't bear it. Well, I put both points of view to Denzil McPherson. Since this afternoon, executive managing controller broadcasting of the BBC. Mr McPherson, everyone seems to hate you. <laughs> well, I think that shows we've got the balance about right. <laughs> well, uh, is, is the balance of the media seesaw here at Broadcasting House indeed about right, or is it, as we've heard, fatally loaded to one side? Well, you, the listener and viewer, are the fulcrum of that delicate seesaw, so we put the question to members of the public in a busy shopping street. Well, I'm standing here in Play Dark Green Shopping Centre. Let's see if we can find someone to talk to. Now, ah, here's a gentleman with an enormous Bonzo Dog Band album tucked under his arm. Let's talk to him. He's hopping. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what? What? What exactly? Uh, the BBC, do you think it's biased to the left or the right? What, the BBC? Yes. To the right. About a hundred yards. Then down to Shepherd's Bush Green, left at the lights and straight along Wood Lane. You can't miss it. Ah, yes. I've just spotted someone coming out of the shop here. Hello. Um, hello, sir. Yes, excuse me. We're, yes. we're talking to people about the BBC. We're well, asking... About the BBC? Uh, yes, well, that is correct. Whether they think it's biased against the opposition or against the government. Oh, what, the BBC? Yes. Do you think it's left-wing or right-wing? Oh, well, that's a tricky one. Uh, what do I win if I get it right? No, I... It's not a competition, we just want your opinion. If my wife is watching this, she'll kill me, I tell you. <laughs> There's no camera, sir, it's just for the radio. Left wing or right wing, eh? That's right. Oh, I'll take right. You're saying right wing? Yeah. No, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, no, go on, yeah, right wing, go on. Right, right wing then? Yeah. Well? Well what? Am I right? <sighs> a young man coming down the street towards me now. I'll see if I can stop him. No, oh, no, driving too fast. Um... Well, it looks as if the British public is undecided too, and with that, it's back to the studio. <laughs>